the right, heading off to positive infinity with my x's. Where's my graph going? Up, it's going to positive <coughs> infinity. And as I'm headed off to negative infinity with my x's, where's my graph going? Down, it's going to negative infinity. And what happened, so I'll get this in a minute. So that's what this says. If I have a positive leading coefficient and an odd degree, then if f, as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. What do you think is going to happen when my leading coefficient becomes negative? Opposite. Nothing. Nothing? Opposite. Opposing that goes view. For opposite? What do you mean by opposite? It's going to go negative infinity and negative infinity. Both of them are going to go to negative infinity? No, negative <coughs> infinity, positive infinity. So what happens to this graph when the leading coefficient becomes negative? It reflects over the x-axis, which makes it look like this. That's what I said. That's exactly what I did. Okay. <laughs> I just thought there were two negative infinities, so I was just checking there. No, I was just checking too. So as I'm headed off to the right, as x is going to infinity, where's my graph going? Positive infinity. Down, so off to negative infinity. And as I'm headed off to the left, toward negative infinity, for yeah. x's, where's my graph going? Positive infinity. Up to positive infinity. This is what you need to know related to good <coughs> behaviors. Notice my even degree functions went both ends to the same place. My odd degree functions, the ends go different places, depending on whether you have a positive, uh, an e a positive or a negative leading coefficient. Now, that's important just so we know how things look in the end. But what's really important in most of what we do is what's happening in the middle where you can't see it because I'm in the way. And that's what we're going to look at now. How are we doing on time? What time is this question? 35. Okay. Then we are not going to look at that quite yet. Three, like we're going to skip cool. that. Hang on. We're going to do this piece next time. But instead, we're going to look at a really quick thing that we can do fast. Here's a graph. Let's start with what is the. What the crap is that? It's a graph. Does it have a look like an even heartbeat. or an odd degree? Even. How do you know it's even? Because they're both going up. Because they're both going up. The both ends are going in the same direction. Now the question that this asks is what is the smallest possible degree of the polynomial that we have the graph for here? And how do you know? How did you get six? How many humps there are? There are not six humps. <laughs> What? Shit. So your humps are the right idea, but there aren't six humps. Right, I know. What do you need to do? Not like the points the Right, hey, which I'm is referred to as humps, minus also one. known as turning points. There are turning points. There's one, two, three, four, five turning points. So how do I know that's going to be degree six? Because you add one. Zeros are not going to do it for you. Why not? It says n. Degree What's plus wrong one. with just counting up how many times it runs over the x-axis? Right, there could be imaginary ones that are not in there, but they will be taken care of by the turning points. For instance, I could have taken this whole thing and moved it up six, I mean, move, yeah, moved it up several units, you know? still have the same number of turns, <coughs> and still be able to say that the minimum degree is six. You take how many turns there are and add one. And that will tell you the smallest degree that the polynomial <coughs> can have. Because it doesn't always have to run into the x-axis in order to ready? have six zeros. Yeah. Or however many zeros. Why do you add one? Because we knew this had to be, it's all, that's the policy. You add one. That we know it's even, but it only has five turns. So in order for something to have both ends go up, it has to make an odd number of turns in the middle for both ends to go up. If they went separate ways, then it would have to make an even number of turns in the middle to go separate directions. And we will finish this.